Okay, good afternoon everybody. This is Brian Garvin and today I'm gonna make what I feel is gonna be one of the most important videos I'm gonna make all year and that's about Ethereum and why I bought some and I'm gonna go into detail about that. Um, first thing I want to say is I gotta give you the legal disclaimer that I'm not a financial planner and this is not financial advice. Uh, this information is for educational and informational purpose, uh, purposes only. Um, everybody, including myself, is responsible for making uh, their own investment decisions. Um, I'm making this video out of Oceanside, California. My name is Brian Garvin again. And one thing I want to tell you is my airborne wings here. I was a paratrooper when I was in the Marine Corps. I did 20 combat jumps out of mostly out of MC1-1 Bravo. Um, Fort Benning, I got trained at Fort Benning and did five jumps there and did the other 15 while I was in the fleet. Um, and you know when they gave me this little pin, you know what they did? They put the, the button in the middle so it keeps so if you ever see it go like this There's a reason it's not because I'm not squared away and I don't you know I have to keep putting it like this because um, they what they should have done is put the button on each side So anyway, just wanted to give you that little bit of info um, This is gonna be a relatively long video. This isn't gonna this is probably gonna be my longest video but it's life-changing and I feel um, it will change your life if you could just uh, stick with it in, through the end. Um, first, I'm going to discuss the basic information about Ethereum. Uh, most of it, which you probably already know, but I got to go over it anyway for someone that knows nothing about crypto. Because I, I, I tend to create videos for the most basic people, to, you know, just entering the space. Um, then I'm going to go into more specific use cases of, of the token and, and why it's so important. Uh, it's going to be so important in this bull run. Um, and then why I think it's one of the best crypto plays in the 2024 crypto cycle, if not the best. Um, I'm going to tell you how much I own or how much I play. I don't really own, own too much yet other than a, about 30. No, about, actually, it's about close to six and a half grand. But I do plan on um, purchasing a lot more, but we're going to go into that soon. So I'm going to give my predictions and personal allocation closer to the end of the video because I want to talk about why the coin is so important first. Um, so hang in there. Uh, we'll get to it. Um, Ethereum launched on July 30th of 2015, which is only eight years ago. And, and, and it's had its ups and, well, as of the time of this video, Ethereum is around $3,600 right now uh, per coin. Uh, just about, I think a year ago was like about two grand or under so it, it, it's appreciated a little bit but but nothing like it's going to um, it currently has a market cap of uh, 436 uh, billion dollars so it, it's the largest coin other than Bitcoin it's second only to Bitcoin so it's in the crypto space it's it's a pretty safe bet because you know you're not talking about token 135 or something like that right you're talking about coin number two um, it's currently the highest market cap coin in crypto right behind Bitcoin like I just said and I feel it will stay this way. I don't think anything is going to flip Bitcoin. Solana has a small chance, but I really think Ethereum is getting their act together right now. And I'm going to go over all that soon. Um, right now, the 24 hour, hour volume of Ethereum at, at the time I'm making this video is $10 million per day. Um, it's circulating total supply is just over 120 million Ethereum coins. Um, that's, that's really not a whole lot compared to to the billions of people that are, you know, in the world that will eventually adopt this coin over the years. Um, it, it's fully diluted market cap is about the same as the total market cap. And just in case you don't know what a fully diluted market cap is, by definition, excuse me, by definition, it means the total value of a particular crypto asset calculated under the same assumption that all the project's tokens have already been distributed, which is the case with Ethereum. All, all, their, all the coins in Ethereum have already been distributed. It's not like Bitcoin where they had still have a few more that haven't been. Um, it's determined by multiplying the current price of an asset by its max supply. Okay, um, and, and, and uh, just in, for the people that don't know, it was created by a genius programmer named Vitalik Buterin. Um, so I'm going to give you my opinion on Bitcoin before I go too much into Ethereum because I don't want a lot of you guys thinking that I'm not bullish on Bitcoin because I'm totally bullish on Bitcoin. Anybody that invests in Bitcoin, it, it, it's, it, it's a great bet. Um, so I'm going to start off by saying that um, I feel that Ethereum in the next cycle, in the next four to five years, is the best coin to be in. 
um, but I still am totally bullish on Bitcoin. Um, 24 to, 2024 to 2030, you definitely want to own some Ethereum. I would, anyways. Um, let me say what I think about Bitcoin so you'll know what I'm, I'm still bullish on. I feel Bitcoin can easily pass $1 million per coin um, by about 2030 because, you know, we've got the end of this year and then five more years after that. And, and I think it's very, it, it's very um, probable to, to see it pass that by 2030. And right now, um, Bitcoin has the largest network and right and even though it's sitting at 70,000 right now, that's a 14x gain in five years. I mean, who, who wouldn't want a 14x gain, right? I, I mean, I know I, I want a 14x gain and yes, I hold Bitcoin. I, after I do my transfer to some in Ethereum, which I'm gonna go over later, I'll still, I mean, I'm, I'm, I still want those 14x returns from two Bitcoin because it's safe. It's the safest asset out there because it's the biggest market cap. And the chances of it going to zero are, well, I can't, there's no guarantee, obviously, I can't do that, but it's, the chances as far as I'm concerned are like one in a trillion. Um, so, for, so yes, so I own her, yeah, just like I said, um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, since it's been around, in the last, I think it, I think it started around 2009. It's created a hundred thousand millionaires. That's a lot. But if you think about the eight, you know, six to eight billion people in the world, that's nothing. I mean, it's a drop in the bucket. And I'm sure in this cycle, Bitcoin's going to create more millionaires in the next five years, and I'm going to be one of them. I'm just off Bitcoin. Um, but you know, um, if 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 you're strapped or whatever, cash wise or whatever, I think Ethereum's going to do a better return in the next five years and I'm going to get more into that soon. Um, Ethereum, according to many trusted experts, this isn't just me talking, these are people that are a lot smarter than me. Um, and I and I scoured the internet looking for other, you know, the, the people that have a lot of credibility. Um, and they said that, you know, basically um, Ethereum could eclipse Bitcoin in the near future and create 20 times the millionaires um, based on future market cap alone. So this means that Ethereum has a chance, no guarantee, but it has a chance to create 2 million millionaires. Um, and that's incredible because Bitcoin's only created 100,000. Um, so, so the opportunity for ETH is like being in Bitcoin in 2014. I mean, it, it's, it really is. I mean, you have a second chance. And, and that's why I'm making this video to let you know, know how important this is. Um, Basically, and, and this is this could all happen within a span of five and a half years. You know, once we hit 2030, um, it's it's not the mid, it's not even mid 2024 yet. So so this this could realistically happen. You have to understand, you know, five years is a ton of time in crypto. Um, it's positioned itself in the in the as a leader in the upcoming quadrillion dollar market. Um, I don't know if you have any idea how much a quadrillion is. Um, I'm, I'm not a mathematician, but I, I do know what it is. A quadrillion is a thousand trillion or a million billion, okay? So I guess that would be, I don't know. I, I my, Like I said, my math's not perfect, but just take what I said, it, it, it's true. I'm not gonna go into anything else other than that. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean the market cap will, will, will be that high, but it does, it will take a majority of this volume versus a lot of other crypto po projects. In other words, the market cap on, on Ethereum isn't gonna be a quadrillion, but if it takes a decent amount of market cap away from a lot of the other projects that are competing against Ethereum, like Solana and those, it could be on the low end 20 trillion and on the high end up to 43 trillion. Um, so trillions is the floor, not the ceiling for this coin. So like I just said, you know, um, this is big time. Uh, based on its use cases, it could realistically reach a $43 trillion market cap by 2030 um, so that would mean this coin would easily 100x within that time frame. But let's be realistic. Let's say it only 70x's. Now, if Bitcoin goes to a million dollars, that that's a 14x, right? So if Ethereum uh, does it like a 70x, would you rather have a 14x or a 70x? Okay. Um, because if it, the, the, here's the reason. I'm going to go into the technical, a little bit of the technical details. Not crazy tech, but tech you should know as an investor. Ethereum can process more transactions in Bitcoin and, and will also be more useful. 
um, because Bitcoin is just a store of value. It, it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Bitcoin. It's going to go to a million. But like I said, if people actually use Ethereum, it will also have more users. It will produce higher returns than Bitcoin and give the average person a rare second chance to build massive crypto wealth. Uh, right now, Bitcoin cro uh, processes about 450,000 transactions per day. Ethereum process a, processes a million per day. Ethereum also generates four times more transaction fees than Bitcoin daily. Uh, this means people are actually using this coin, and that, that's important. I mean, they're, they're actually using it, 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 it and that's going to create a powerful network when people are actually depend on the coin for, their, for what they're doing. Um, and, and as far as the developers, Bitcoin right now has about a thousand active developers trying to improve the, the, the Bitcoin network, right? But Ethereum has just under 7,800 active developers. This is a big deal because this means Ethereum is over a seven to one ratio over Bitcoin as far as developers are concerned. Um, the other thing, Ethereum, it, you know, it's idiosyncrasy of is that it has more developers than any other active crypto coin in the world. If you take a look at all the crypto coins, I don't have charts to show you, but you'll just, you could research it online and you'll see I'm, I'm telling the truth. Um, there's Ethereum has, there's no other coin in the world that has 7,800 active developers. And, and, you know, some of the most talented developers in the crypto space are leaving Silicon Valley, which is, you know, where a lot of them used to hang out. And some of them are, are they're heading uh, to the thousands uh, to Zug, Switzerland, and, and a couple, maybe a couple other parts of the world working remotely. Um, and they're all collaborating to make Ethereum a technology um, everyone can use and benefit from for the long term. So, you know, it, it's, it's like such a strong play, it's unreal. Um, the Den Kuhn upgrade, let's talk about that a little bit. This video doesn't cover the deep technology like proto dank sharding, um, but it will give you a basic overview. Okay, Den Kuhn introduces a new type of transaction called blobs that allow level twos to store large amounts of data more efficiently on the main net. Um, the beneficiaries of this upgrade are level two networks. Um, and let me give you some examples. I'm sure you've heard of some of these before. Polygon, Arbitrum, Base, Blast, Mantle, Metis DAO, and Optimism. These are all projects that are gonna directly benefit from Ethereum. And so when Ethereum starts pumping in a big way, the, the, you, you should take a look at these coins too because they'll also pump. Um, these platforms are expected to see a significant reduction in transaction cost and should also massively pump when Ethereum does. Um, Den Kuhn was finished on March 13, 2024, which was just literally three weeks ago. Um, so we haven't really seen any, any real benefits from the upgrade yet. I mean, it just, I mean, we haven't, I mean, there hasn't even been a bull since then of Bitcoin, and Bitcoin's going to pump Ethereum as well. So you have to think about all this. But you, in the next couple years, you, you will see a lot of benefits that are gonna to come to fruition because of the Dan Kuhn upgrade. Um, now let's talk about the Ethereum spot ETF. Um, the SEC is likely to approve a spot Ethereum ETF on May 23rd, 2024. They're, they're, they're gonna to have to go to court to get it approved because the SEC is probably gonna to try to fight it a little bit. Um, well, actually I ain't gonna say a little bit, they're actually gonna fight it pretty hard. But if you check out my other video titled 11 Reasons Why the Ethereum Spot ETF Should Get Approved, you should sleep a lot easier um, tonight once you go through that video. And the reason I say that is because that's 11 reasons that pretty much shoves it in the SEC's face. You know, they've been calling it a, um, not a security, but a, uh, the other name for it, but not a, they, they um, there's another name for it, but it's not a security, it's, it's the other. So, you know, like I said, I'm not a genius at this stuff, but I know the basics. After a couple of years of the Ethereum spot ETF being made public, it could bring in 1 billion users. And nobody thought Facebook could ever have over a billion users, uh, but it happened, right? Crypto is a smoking hot topic now, and it could, and, and like I said, there's, there's a good chance it could reach a billion users. And, and even if it doesn't in two years, it could be three to four years it could do it. Um, let, right now, less than 5% of the people even know about cryptocurrency and way less than this own Ethereum. 
Um, so you're talking, so if you get into Ethereum now, when, I, when I'm telling you about this, you, you could literally be, as far as retail investors go, in the top one, 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 one and a half percent. Um, and, you know, it, and a lot of people don't know the techniques that you, you employ when you get into this, like, you know, buy and hodl and things like that. You could be in the top one percent if you just put your mind to it and, you know, take a little action. Um, because right now we're still super early. I mean, you know, just nothing has really happened yet in a big way with Ethereum too, you know, and Bitcoin. Um, well, Bitcoin is starting, but you know, Ethereum is going to follow seed in the next few months. So the story of Ethereum is like being on the internet in the 1990s. Uh, the coin, the coin over the next two cycles will be the biggest quadrillion dollar disruptor in crypto. Uh, and, and like I mentioned before, a quadrillion is a thousand trillion or a million billion. Um, so if you completely miss the Bitcoin boom, e Ethereum will give you the opportunity to achieve multi-generational wealth that you and your family deserve. Uh, this coin has the highest potential upside with the least potential downside. Th this will be like getting in Bitcoin in 2014, like I mentioned earlier, which makes makes this a, a second chance. If you miss a Bitcoin boom, you have another chance. See, one of the things you have to understand about the market is is, is in one way or another, they always give second chances. It could be artificial intelligence. It could be virtual reality. Um, it could even be quantum computing. But there's always going to be one play out there that you could make that can, you know, lift you, you know, lift you up from your financial bootstraps and, and take you to the next level. But you have you have to know about it and you have to take action. Uh, so one of the things about Ethereum is it supports real world assets. And a lot of people think it's just for, you know, certain projects or whatever, or gaming or whatever. No, there's a ton more. In DeFi, it supports everything. Um, real world assets are called RWAs. And, and one of them is, is, is derivatives, which is ancillary to ETFs, and they're not even in Bitcoin yet. Imagine when, when they come to fruition with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, it, it, they support real estate, insurance, stocks, precious metals, and, and, and anything that's a real world asset can be brought on chain. Um, once they're brought on chain in the next five to eight years, it, it could easily 100x, and even conservatively, I could say it could 70x. You know, I mean, who, who's going to turn down seven, you know, if you put in a dollar, who's going to turn down getting back 70, right? And what if, if you do a few grand, do the math. Um, so one example is if you're selling a house, Ethereum can track everything. So real estate agent fees in the future, not now, but, you know, maybe five to seven years from now, could be a thing of the past. They're going to use them less and less because everything, you know, these bigger real estate companies are going are gonna to bring RWA on chain with Ethereum, using Ethereum. Um, now, before the Den Kuhn upgrade, um, ETH had some issues. It only used to be able to process about 2,000 transactions a second, which is pretty slow, especially when you're talking about the global community. Um, now, compare that to 5,000 transactions per second that MasterCard uh, produces and 23,000 transactions per second by Visa. I'm not really sure about Discover because they're, they're not that big of a player anyways as, as far as these go. But Ethereum is going to eventually be able to process a thousand transactions per second. That's what the Den Kuhn upgrade kind of supports. And if they might not be there quite yet, but give them a year or two and they'll be there. Um, so what you're looking at is something 50 times faster than before, making it a token that will be in extremely high demand. Everyone's going to want to use it. Not everybody, but you know most of the bigger entities out there. So in lower fees, let's talk about those. The, Ethereum fees are expected to drop 99% as well, making it a much faster and cheaper solution. Um, Vitalik is like a genius, and when there's a problem, he, he addresses it. Um, and, and, it and it took time, but you know they're, they're getting around to doing it now. Now, the future market cap, okay, once it reaches one, over 1 billion users, um, it, on the low end, I could say it can have a market cap of uh, 20 trillion. And on the high end, it could be 43 trillion. Now, Bitcoin's gonna gonna rise too during all this, but it I don't know if, if Ethereum's gonna flip Bitcoin for sure, but it has a good chance to, um, because there there's real world use of uh, it's not just a store of value like Bitcoin. There's actually real world assets that can be brought on chain. Um, now, I'm not saying it will, but it could give Bitcoin a run for its money. 
the market cap could be bigger than all the main tech giants combined. Because if you figure in, in NVIDIA is like 1.5 trillion and Amazon, I don't know, they're like a trillion and Microsoft is probably close to a trillion. But but if you add all those up, that's still not as much as is a, the potential for Ethereum. This is the, that's what I'm saying. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. I'm sorry to throw this in your face. It almost feels rude in this set. But if I can get some of you guys to, to believe, then, then I can be responsible for helping you stack a lot of cheddar over the next, you know, five years. So, and that's why I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it to help you because I don't get paid anything if you put money in Ethereum or you sign up for Coinbase. I don't, I don't get affiliate commissions from that. I get, I get, I just want the satisfaction of someone emailing you say, you know, like two or three years later, hey, Brian, I took your advice. I got it to eat. And, you know, now it's, you know, uh, however, you know, 30,000 a coin or something like that in a couple of years. So, so as far as I'm concerned, Ethereum is the most, one of the most fantastic ideas in the financial world today. There are a couple others. I like, I like Chainlink and I like Quant. I've told you guys that before. I haven't done a video on Quant yet, but I will hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, early ETH had some bugs, including slow transaction times and high gas fees. Some of you guys that know a little bit about ETH know about that. Um, but these are coming to an end soon. So it's not the same ETH as you used to know. And in, 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 in a market so explosive, you, you kind of, are you kind of able to put two and two together and see what the opportunity is here? Um, also quite a few billionaires are pouring lots of money into this coin. One of them is Mark Cuban and there are some others. Um, I didn't write all the names down, but, but you could research it. Um, it it's pretty easy to find. Um, now imagine all right, let, let, let's be real here. Imagine if you put $3,000 in Ethereum, okay? Which isn't even a full coin, and you're betting on the best project of the 2024, 20, 2028 cycle. Um, and then imagine watching your balance grow over the next five years as one billion people join you later. All right, let's say, for example, you could just put 3,000 in, boom, just put it in and forget about it, and then check it in 2030, you know? But if you don't have three grand, why not DCA 300 a month for the next 10 months? You know, I mean, just, I don't know, mow some lawns or something, get a part-time job, whatever it takes, because it, it could really have a positive impact on your financial future. So I'm gonna tell you about my allocation right now, and this is not financial advice, I'm gonna say it one more time. It's just what I personally decided to do with, you know, as far as Ethereum goes. I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna, because what I'm trying to do right now, I'm gonna explain all this, but, Right now, I, right now I own 2.5 Bitcoin. Okay, after an allocation of ETH, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually put half of a Bitcoin into Ethereum, and that'll leave me with probably just under two Bitcoin, and 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 I'll try to DCA back into Bitcoin and try to get it up to two again. But if I can't, that's fine. It's not a big deal. As long as I own some ETH, I'm I'm gonna be happy. Um, here's the thing. After, if I if I transfer half of a Bitcoin into Ethereum, that's only 20% uh, percent of my stack because I own 2.5 Bitcoin. So if I put 0.5 into ETH, which I plan on doing, probably closer to the end of May, um, right before the Ethereum, Ethereum uh, well, see here, here's what's going on. They're gonna, on, the, on May 23rd, 2024, they're gonna be in court to see if the uh, SEC versus, um, you know, I think it's Larry from BlackRock to see if they're gonna, their Bitcoin uh, ETF. Now, Larry got his way, or BlackRock got their way on January 8th when they approved the uh, first Bitcoin. I mean, the spot ETF Bitcoin. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure either they're going to approve it or they're, they're going to say, um, well, you know, go back and make these changes. Make sure, you know, you buy the Ethereum up front and, and it has to be a cash deal where you guys, per, you know, BlackRock purchases all up front and then as they give it out through their allocation, um, they could do it that way, you know. Um, I don't know all the legal details because I'm not, I'm not really not a legal guy, but I know that there, it's eventually going to get approved. If it doesn't get approved in May, it could be July or August. They'll set another date and they'll come back and ask them to make certain corrections. They'll make them. BlackRock, they'll comply because they really want it launched. And because I think BlackRock's going to try to take over the world soon, um, along with Michael Saylor. Um, but Michael Saylor is a Bitcoin maximalist, so. Um, but see, that's the really deal with it, uh, and um, eventually it's going to get approved. So that if, if it doesn't get approved in May, so what? Just just hodl it till 2030. Don't don't check on the price. Don't worry about dips during the you know next two or three years. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It means nothing. It, what matters is holding it for five years. 
Um, I'll be watching Bitcoin and Ethereum very closely around this time, around around the May 23rd time frame. And if and, and, and what I'm going to do is if Bitcoin's in a, in a parabolic bull, I'm going to hold on to the Bitcoin until the bull stops. And once Bitcoin starts dipping, then I'm going to make the transfer somewhere around the May 23rd time frame. Could be a little sooner, could be a week sooner, um, could be three weeks later. It doesn't matter. But sometime I'm going to make the, the when it makes sense to, you know, when it makes sense, when the numbers of Bitcoin are going like this and then Ethereum's going like this, that that's when I'm going to make the trade. It's just a judgmental trade. It's not based on any science or anything. I'm just going to look at the numbers. I guess that is science in a sense. Um, but yeah, so the if the ET, like I said before, yeah. Now, now think about this. What would you rather invest in? Bitcoin 14 times or Ethereum, you know, 70 to 100 times? I mean, which would you rather invest in? It's a simple question, but you have to understand. There's a, there, you know, I'm, in, I'm still, I'm still, um, I'm only giving up 20% of my Bitcoin. I'm not giving up all of it. And I'm not saying you should either. If, if you have, you know, say six thousand dollars laying around, I'm just giving you a hypothetical example. Um, one thing, you, I'm not recommending anything, but one thing you can consider is purchasing 3,000 of Bitcoin and 3,000 of ETH. So you've got a nice little balance there of two high yield coins. Um, so that's my Ethereum plan. So what's yours? Um, if Ethereum does 100X, a 3,000 investment would make you $300,000. I'm sure most of you know that. I don't think that it would hurt your financial situation one bit if you got involved in Ethereum and, and hodled it for five years. Um, if you had the if if you had this the rest of your life without losing the principal, uh, well, no. If you had that much in crypto and were through four percent a year, let's say you put three thousand in, it goes to hundred thousand. This is hypothetical. There's no guarantees, but let's say uh, you withdrew four percent of the year of the three hundred thousand that you earn, um, you you can actually withdraw twelve thousand a year for the rest of your life. That's like a little annuity you just created for yourself. I mean, you're gonna pass that up just for a, a few grand. I mean, it's all about leverage and, and working less to achieve more, right? I mean, that's why I'm in the game and I'm, you know, and, and that's my my plan. So I'm sticking my money where my mouth is. I don't recommend stuff that I don't actually have my own money in a decent amount. Um, when I put in a half Bitcoin, if I wait until the end of May to do it, Bitcoin could be, be 100,000 or over, but it could be 110,000. So I'm gonna take, half of that which like say it's 110,000 hypothetically and it's like 55 grand and that's how much I'm going to put in ETH regardless of the price it could be 3,500 it could be four grand whatever um so so many um a lot of experts think even the next 10 20 years that the crypto market's going to keep appreciating and on the low end six percent to twelve percent a year that that's after all the hype is done and after and not even after 2030 I mean it can go 10 20 years before and go even higher than that until it finally levels out and the whole world's involved in crypto and then it goes down to maybe 4% or whatever. Um, so, you know, you want to set goals to, and take advantage of this one, you know, this one window of opportunity from 2024 20, to 2030, not just in Ethereum, but Bitcoin, you want to be in Chainlink, you want to be in Quant. And I'm going to go over some others down the road that I think are really good projects as well. And I'm not the type of person to shill anything. I, I put my own money in anything that I talk about or I won't talk about it. You know, it's that simple. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with going into low cap here and there to gamble a little money. I mean, it's your money. You have a right to do what you want with it. And I'm going to go over some of those in future videos as well. So you're going to be happy with that. Um, so I feel that 70 percent. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, seven. I feel that multiplying your money. 70 times for what you do in the next five years for ETH, for Ethereum, is a conservative figure because I think it is the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, if, if you feel you learned something here, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Um, also click the notification bell so you can get automated um, notifications of future videos I release. Um, also please like this video and leave a comment below. Your comments um, always generate an interesting dialogue. I'll be in touch soon with my next video and uh, have a great one. Take care. Bye-bye.